Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we turn to talking about classical music. Apparently classical music has been called offensive now, and some are saying it's even racist because of its different makeups of people. Apparently, if a thing doesn't have enough minorities in it, it's automatically racist now, even if that's just happening because of people's choices and preferences. Sometimes certain people are attracted to certain kinds of music. Like, for example, there's a lot more black rappers than white ones, but no one's going to say, oh, that's because of racism. Oh, that's because, oh, they're not letting white people into that music. It's like, no, there's still some white rappers out there. There's the logics the Little Dickies, the M&Ms, stuff like that. Like, they happen. It's just, in average, overall, it tends to be more black rappers. And the same thing goes for a lot of different other styles of music, too. Jazz used to be black-dominated. There's other styles, like mariachi bands tend to have Hispanic players. That's where that music's from. Classical music, in this example, it just happens to come from, like, European continent from a long time ago during, like, the classical Renaissance period. And that leads to them having a number of white people that are involved in it. Beethoven, all these other classical people that wrote it. And even up until the present, it, it's still a style that's preferred in countries with that kind of makeup. Now, that's the basic explanation. We could see why it's being called racist just because everything's being called racist these days. So we're going to talk about this more. We're going to get into the story right now. This article was the first one I saw about it. It says from the Washington Post perspective, that sound you're hearing is classical music's long overdue reckoning with racism. Ooh, that sounds terrible. And um, why is everything associated with European or white history condemned as racist? While anything non-white is automatically culturally enriching and distinctive. Why does every ethnicity's history other than white get to enjoy artistic expression without the guilt trip? Yeah, this is a very, very good point right out the gate. Top comment. It's yeah, it's like I was saying, like the, you could compare other types of music, other uh, interests too. Like there's other things that have certain races in them. Like for example, basketball and football tend to have more African American players. Uh, there's a lot of Hispanics who like baseball. People from the Caribbean, you know, white people tend to be into this thing more. Like say chess. I don't know. There's just certain things that attract certain people. It's like why girls and gay people like musicals and Dudes are more into like punk rock and rock and roll and stuff like that. Like there's just different tastes and, you know, there's no wrong thing about that. It's not like inherent. It's just this kind of thing that different communities enjoy. But the problem here is obviously anything that has a majority white, anything having to do with European history and our ancestors, it's automatically found out to be racist in some way, even though it's not. So this is one of the more ridiculous stories. Here's another one about it. It says... Founded on white European models and obstinately focused on the distant past, classical music has been even slower than American society at large to confront racial inequity. Nine black performers describe steps to begin transforming a white-dominated field. So that kind of really heavily implies that there's a problem here, right? Like, oh, if something's dominated by white people, that's an issue. That's offensive. It has something to do with racism or someone is mistreating someone. But that's not the case. That's what we're getting at. That's what we're trying to explain here. Like people can have different preferences. People can enjoy different kinds of music. And just because a certain job or profession or hobby has more white people, it's not the problem. I mean, like I said, we have all these other things that have other races involved, but that's never a problem. Africans are praised for their music from Africa. And if we went over there and said, hey, why isn't there any white people playing these drums or something like that? That would obviously not work. It doesn't make sense. It's just totally ridiculous. And I can't believe we actually have to go this far. I can't believe I'm defending classical music of all things today. But this is the world we're living in. This is the modern society. This is what progressives are concerned about. They don't really care about actual issues or trying to help people in the present. They're focused on the past and calling everything racist and trying to diversify things, which really just means less white people. With their major institutions founded on white European models and obstinately focused on the distant past, classical music and opera have been even slower than American society at large to confront racial inequity. Black players make up less than 2% of the nation's orchestras. The Metropolitan Opera still has yet to put on a work by a black composer. Now, what you got to ask yourself after that section is, what's the reason for this? You know, what, what's going on? Why is 2% of orchestras 
only black players and why haven't they had a black composer put on at the Metro? You know, it's not because of racism. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, you're not proven racism just because of this disparity, just because a certain type of music has a certain demographic involved in it. That does not prove racism. Full stop, end of sentence. This video could be wrapped up right here. That's all we need to say. Basically, they kind of assume racism. This is the liberal gimmick. This is what they always do. This is what they do with those arrests gone wrong in our country. This is what they do when movies don't have the right colored characters that they want. It's always assumed racism. There's no proven racism. You know, showing that there's different kinds of people in a profession, that's not proving racism. Like just because, oh, this job, this music style has less of this race, that's not because of racism. Like you'd have to prove it. You have to say, hey, Let's get to the next step. Like, are these places that have orchestras, do they have a sign on their door that says no black people allowed, no minorities allowed? Are there people that are hiring there? Are they saying that they won't hire you if you're a certain race? Like, we need actual proof of racism in order to show that it exists. I know that sounds simple and just totally basic, but that's what we have to explain to people like this. They, they really don't get it. They really think if they just point to a difference and show us this gap, that's racism. Racism of the gaps is what this argument is. And it goes back to the person who coined that term, AIU, Atheism is Unstoppable. Great channel, by the way. He's up on Censor.tv now. He had to move his channel over there. So I recommend you guys check that out when you get a chance. He's got new videos, always producing great content. And I always give him credit when he has good terms and good points, like this racism of the gaps one that's getting up and coming up in this story right here. The protests against police brutality and racial exclusion that have engulfed the country since the end of May have encouraged individuals and organizations toward new awareness of long-held biases and proved new motivation to change. Nine black performers spoke with the New York Times about steps that could be taken to begin transforming a white-dominated field. These are edited excerpts from the conversation. So it's already based on a false assumption. Like, okay, it's great. Like if Nine black people want to talk about maybe getting more black people into classical music. I think that's not bad on its own. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, the way to go about this is just a little different. Like, it's not much different. But if they just threw out the racism part, don't call everyone racist. Don't attack this classical music and its creators and the people that support it. They're fine. Just say, hey, turn to the people that you're trying to court and say, hey, black people, let's try to get into classical music more. Like, here's some cool classical music. Why don't we listen to this? Let's get a black classical music band together on our own or, you know, start a club or a group online. Like, that is totally fine. Like, I'm totally not against that. I know it might sound like that. And a lot of our detractors will say that we're offensive and against this group, but we're really not. We're just against this racist argument. And the way that they frame it here, you know, transforming a white dominated field, that really implies that white dominated is inherently bad. It's not, though. I mean, there's plenty of good white people out there. We're not evil. Us dominating a field or, you know, having the majority in, say, a club or a profession or a hobby or something like that. That's not bad. In fact, white majority countries are some of the best places in the world. That's why everyone's trying to move to America. That's why New Zealand and Australia and Canada are really prosperous. A lot of great countries in Europe as well. Like this is a good thing. Like they're trying to portray as a bad thing because clearly they're anti-white racist. I mean, that's the gist of this. This is written by New York Times, like one of the most biased left-wing outlets out there, supporting all this BLM stuff and the Democrats and the woke SJWs, and we'll get to some of these you know, musicians and their excerpts, but I think already it's just a bad, bad sign. It's a bad look. It's just reverse racism, which isn't really reverse. It's just racism against white people, and I think it goes back to their idea. like They really don't think you could be racist to white people because if they did, if they wanted to treat everyone fairly, this would not fly at all. Here's Monica Ellis, a bassoonist. Nice instrument there, a big one. The first step is admitting that these organizations are built on a white framework built to benefit white people. Have you done the work to create a structure that is actually benefiting black and brown communities? When that occurs, diversity is a natural byproduct. There needs to be intentional hiring of qualified black musicians who you know are going to bring the goods to your audiences. 
intentionally adding qualified black board members to your organization, that's going to allow access to these communities you need to bring into the circle. Administratively, people who are in the room will bring different perspectives. Chamber groups like mine, Amani Wins, have the ability to be more nimble. We can make our own rules and make our own platforms. As a chamber presenter, you can support groups that bring blackness and diversity to their programs. So this looks like it's just a basic affirmative action argument, you know, just hire people because of their skin color, which is kind of like the opposite of fair and balanced and not racist. I mean, it's just saying, hey, this person's black. Let's put them on the board member. Let's put them on this band, you know, giving them the most prestigious, best positions because of their race. I mean, not because of quality or, you know, the application and their fit for that group, for that position. It's no, let's start with the black people and then just find the best that's that race. Exclude white people is the main kind of point here. And yeah, it's just fighting racism with racism. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to kind of have this revenge fantasy. Like obviously these people are bitter and against white people. And uh, the last thing for this section is, I mean, these guys already have these opportunities. If black people wanted to flock to classical music, there's nothing that's going to stop them. There's nothing like besides their own ambition, their own willingness, their want to get into that style of music, to work at these jobs and work at these bands and, you know, write music or whatever they may want to do. They can do it. The sky's the limit. I mean, we're the country that produced more black billionaires than anywhere else. We've got Kanye West. We've got Oprah. We had Obama's as president for eight years. I mean, this is an equal opportunity country. So to pretend it's not is really, really just messed up and showing you don't know how the world works. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Classical music's racist now. How ridiculous. But let me know what you think. Comment your thoughts on everything below. Also hit the like button to get this shared. Subscribe if you're new. And until next time, have a great day. 